Thanks for viewing the presentation. During the lecture, I will highlight the features of heterotaxy syndrome and the criteria used to make the diagnosis with fetal echocardiography. Now, to start with, the word heterotaxy is derived from the Greek words heteros, meaning other or different, and taxis, meaning order of or arrangement. And so the definition in terms of anatomical description is when there is abnormal symmetry consisting of bilateral same-sidedness, where the viscera and atrial anatomy is consistent with the features of mirroring of either left or right-sided anatomical structures. The diagnosis is made when a clustering of abnormalities that meet criteria is present, all having to do with visceral atrial situs discordance and other associated non-cardiac anomalies such as intestinal malposition and malrotation. All of these patients have uh, congenital heart disease, up to 60% of them with complex cardiac malformations, and the mortality rate is about 60% with left atrial isomerism and up to 80% with right atrial isomerism. Now in these fetuses, the liver is usually bilaterally symmetrical and the stomach may be left-sided, right-sided, or midline, essentially due to a common gastrointestinal mesentery the lungs may be bilaterally trilobed, most often seen with right atrial isomerism, or they may be bilaterally bilobed, often seen with the left atrial isomerism subtype. And here you can see the differences between the two features, uh, the two subtypes, the features of each. These lists typically represent what we usually see prevailing in each of the subtypes. Venoatrial features of each subtype listed in red are unique in that they are consistent with the typical features of left or right morphology. Right atrial isomerism has the characteristics of a morphologic right atrium with appropriate systemic venous connections, usually bilaterally to the atria, and there will usually be an absence of left atrial features, as in no direct connection of pulmonary veins to the atria meaning that the pulmonary venous uh, connection is usually anomalous. Conversely, left atrial isomerism will have characteristics of a morphologic left atrium with pulmonary venous connections directly to the atria, and there will usually be an absence of right atrial features with atypical connections of the vena cava to the atria. The coronary sinus of, is a left atrial feature and is usually not present in right atrial isomerism cases. However, the most consistent and reliable method of discerning between right atrial isomerism and left atrial isomerism is the continuity of the inferior vena cava, where you have a continuous IVC always with the right atrial isomerism type and usually an interrupted IVC with the left atrial isomerism type, almost always interrupted. And this interrupted IVC with the presence of complete heart block is absolutely an indicator that this fetus most likely has left atrial isomerism. So with both right atrial isomerism and left atrial isomerism, cardiac malposition can be present. Now the first indicator that you have a fetus with heterotaxy syndrome uh, may be in this view, and you can see here this transverse abdominal view where you have the stomach here and a breech presentation, and you have the heart on the contralateral side as the stomach. In this case, the stomach is on the left and there is dextrocardia. And as you sweep up from the abdomen, you can clearly see that the heart and the stomach are on opposite sides of the fetus and you can also notice a large complete AV canal defect in this fetus. So we've gone over the different features of each subtype of heterotaxy syndrome, but another feature can be used to discern between either heterotaxy subtypes, the right atrial isomerism versus left atrial isomerism, and that is the atrial appendages. Now, in this four-chamber view, you can see clearly the atrial appendages, which have been highlighted here. They are clearly different in shape, and so you have this broad 
uh, triangular shaped right atrial appendage on the right atrium and this narrow finger-like atrial appendage for the left atrium. And these are features that you will see bilaterally in either left or right atrial isomerism. If you can get the picture clear enough, this is a good indicator of the subtype of heterotaxy that you may have in combination with the other features that may be found. The most identifiable feature within the fetal heart for evaluating atrial morphology is the terminal crest or crista terminalis, which is this infolding and the superior cable atrial junction within the right atrium. It is a right atrial feature and all of these hearts will have a superior vena cava and depending on this feature we can see in this sagittal view in the fetal echo when we're imaging the superior vena cava coming into the right atrium this infolding is really identifiable as shown here with this yellow arrow with this morphological right atrium this superior vena cava coming into the right atrium here conversely on this side we have a heart with left atrial isomerism and a superior vena cava coming in where we have an absence of this terminal crest. And as I put it in motion, you can see that this indeed is a prominent infolding at the superior cable atrial junction shown here with the right atrium, morphological right atrium here, and with a left atrial isomerism case, the superior cable atrial junction. There's a smooth transition between the superior vena cava and that atrium. So no terminal crest in this case. Now, in addition to, and probably more identifiable than the superior cable atrial connections are the inferior cable atrial connections in both subtypes. And so I'll show you where the spine is in these cases. On the left panel, we see left atrial isomerism case. And on the right panel, the right atrial isomerism case. This is a transverse abdominal view. This one is just above the, the level of the diaphragm. You're seeing part of the four chamber view here, the atria. This is just below. You're starting to see the uh, diaphragmatic surface of the heart here. But what I wanna draw your attention to is in the left isomerism case, you can see that there are two vessels along the spine. And so in this case, you're having the aorta, which is the red vessel and the blue here is the azagous vein. And what this is, is interruption of the IVC, intrahepatic portion of the IVC is almost ubiquitous in left atrial isomerism cases. And so you'll have continuation of that inferior cable uh, vessel via the azagous vein in this case, or the hemiazagous vein. And so the first key to seeing left atrial isomerism is an interrupted IVC with this dilated azagous vein or hemiazagous vein. And so if you see that, the presence of this double barrel on the, along the spine in this transverse abdominal or uh, uh, really upper abdominal near the diaphragm or in the four chamber view, if you're seeing this, you should suspect possible left atrial isomerism just based on this finding. Uh, and of course you wanna put together the other features that you would find intracardiac as well. On the right panel, you have right atrial isomerism case. Here are the aorta and the IVC and this IVC in right atrial isomerism. The IVC is almost always continuous and connects to the atria, the floor of the atria, whether it's the common atrium, the right or the left atrium. Uh, it could be in either of those. Uh, and it's juxtaposed to the aorta. Typically, we see it right next to the aorta. In this case, we have another vessel right here. This is actually an inferior uh, vertical vein that uh, courses below the diaphragm because it carries blood from total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage uh, confluence behind the atria. And so this would go inferior to the diaphragm and connect to the portal system typically or the hepatic venous uh, system. Uh, to carry blood anomalously back to the heart, typically in this case obstructed, and these fetuses will usually be in really bad shape postnatally. So now we're gonna go over some cases, and we'll start out with left atrial isomerism cases, which are typically a bit easier to diagnose. 
This first fetus is in a vertex or cephalic presentation. Here is the transverse view through the abdomen to begin with, with the stomach on the left. This is left, this is right. Posterior here with the spine and anterior here. And you can see that the stomach, both the stomach and the heart are on the left side. And so you see levocardia, but importantly, you start to see what looks like a dilated azagous vein next to this aorta. And so the aorta is to the left of midline. This is a dilated azagous vein. And when you see this, uh, you must suspect intrahepatic uh, interruption of the inferior vena cava, IVC, with azagous vein continuation. This alone by itself, the presence of this, should heighten your suspicion for left atrial isomerism. Looking at here, clearly we can see a large primum atrial septal defect and what appears to be a common or complete AV canal defect here with a common atrioventricular valve and an inlet VSD. These pulmonary veins draining directly to this right-sided atrium also adds to the suspicion that this may be heterotaxy syndrome left atrial isomerism type, just based on this interrupted IVC here. Sweeping more cephalad, looking at this inlet VSD, it's a large inlet VSD and complete AV canal defect, and even more cephalad sweeping up to the outflow tract. You can clearly see that there is a single outflow tract here arising from this right ventricle, and this main artery comes up into the chest upper chest and does not appear to bifurcate. Closer look at this, sweeping up even further up into the chest here at the level of the thymus gland. You can see a nice large thymus gland here in front of the, the heart. And this vessel, again, does not bifurcate. So it's likely that this is the aorta. Here is the SVC and what appears to be a dilated azagous vein draining into that SVC here and then no obvious appearance of pulmonary artery branches. As if, if this is the aorta, we should see a pulmonary artery bifurcation or some pulmonary arteries going out into the lungs here. With color Doppler looking at this flow coming out of this outflow tract here from the LV streaming across this VSD, again, there's not another outflow tract here, and so there's likely atresia of the pulmonary valve and main pulmonary artery. This large vessel coming out is the aorta and blood is streaming from the LV across to the RV through the VSD. RV, uh, the aorta originates from the RV and there is no acceleration through this valve. Flow is going appropriately through that, integrate through that aortic valve up into the ascending aorta. Now sweeping even more cephalad, this is the transverse aorta. Here you see antegrade flow red toward the transducer. We're again behind the left side of the chest. This is the SVC. Here's the trachea. And we're seeing at the end of this sweep a little bit of a blue flash here, which probably represents the right pulmonary artery. We're looking for a ductal structure in this case to be feeding the pulmonary arteries. And with color Doppler, we can see retrograde flow in what appears to be a, a tortuous ductus arteriosus. This cursor here is placed in line to interrogate the flow pattern, but you can clearly see that it's arising from the aorta and curling around and is blue here. And so that's a retrograde flow pattern into the And further sweeping down, you can see that that ductus inserts into the proximal left pulmonary artery here. And so here's the left pulmonary artery. The right pulmonary artery is here. There is no main pulmonary artery segment observed. And so this is probably ductal origin of these, the pulmonary artery bifurcation here. And so this is a ductal dependent lesion where you have ductus, uh, the reliance of the ductus arteriosus on pulmonary blood flow in this fetus. A different case, this is another cephalic presenting fetus. This is a transverse view through the chest. Here's the spine, so this is posterior. This is anterior. Importantly, this is right. If the, if the fetus is uh, 
is a cephalic presenting fetus. This is the right side of the fetus. This is the left side, and so you can see that there is dextrocardia from the outset. Uh, the heart is large, but importantly, you can see that the heart rhythm is not normal. This is complete atrioventricular heart block, where we can see that the atria are beating typically twice to three times the, the rate of the ventricular rate, and so this effective heart rate is going to be about 50. And you can see again the dilated uh, hemiazygous vein in this case, since this is left, then that is the hemiazygous vein. Here's the pulsating aorta, and that is your clue that this is uh, left atrial isomerism with the presence of complete heart block, complete AV septal defect or AV canal defect again, and the interrupted intrahepatic portion of the IVC with hemiazygous continuation of that IVC. This is another case of left atrial isomerism with a cephalic presenting fetus. Again, uh, you're seeing here massive ascites in this hydropic fetus, a left-sided stomach. So this is left, this is right. There's the spine, stomach here. And at the end of this sweep, you can see dextrocardia. The heart is in the right chest. Importantly, you see this midline liver all the way across here, broad midline liver. And at the end of the sweep, you can see that the heart rhythm is not normal as well. Looking closely, here's the liver. Again, the heart is in the right chest. If you look at the spine, you can see here that there is the double barrel appearance of the aorta and the azygous vein in this case, the dilated azygous vein, cluing you into the presence of interruption of the interhepatic portion of the IVC with azygous continuation, again, heart block, and really massive ascites. Looking closer at the heart rhythm, you can see it's two to one atrioventricular heart block and complete AV canal defect, very thickened ventricles, non-compacted appearing myocardium with a very large heart cardiac to thoracic ratio. Looking a little closer, this is a type of double outlet right ventricle. And the, here you see at the end of that sweep, you can see the outflow tracks, the aorta here arising from the RV, and then the pulmonary artery here arising also from the right ventricle. Different angle. This is still sort of a parasagittal kind of an axial cut here. You see the left ventricle here, the right ventricle, and this outflow tract is the aortic outflow tract, the aortic valve here, and posterior to that is the pulmonary artery here, smaller in diameter than the aorta, but double outlet right ventricle here with color Doppler. You can see antegrade flow, non-accelerated antegrade flow through both of those vessels. So the pulmonary artery is patent, uh, but looks narrowed here. Now on to right atrial isomerism. I'll show a couple of cases and then we'll summarize. This first case shows a fetus in the cephalic presentation. This is posterior, this is anterior, this is left, and this is right. And when we put this in motion, you can see that the stomach is on the left side of the fetus while the heart is on the right. Uh, this is dextrocardia. And this is your first clue that there may be something uh, very complex in relation to heterotaxy syndrome, where you have the heart on the contralateral side of the stomach. And as the imaging plane is swept more cephalad, you can see what appears to be a single outflow tract, very complex congenital heart defect with a dominant single ventricle and what looks like a, an unbalanced complete AV septal defect or AV canal defect with a large primum ASD here. Sweeping more cephalad, you can see that the aortic arch 
this vessel here, the single outflow tract, becomes the aortic arch without bifurcation and arches to the right of the trachea. Here you see what appears to be bilateral superior vena cavi as well. And we're still not seeing a secondary outflow tract. And so focusing more on that, again, complex congenital heart defect with unbalanced complete AV septal defect, a dominant, what appears to be maybe right ventricle, and again, a large primum ASD here, and the IVC appears to be intact. Again, this is the aorta on the spine, and we're not seeing a dilated azagous or hemiazagous vein. So as we apply color, we can see flow retrograde in what is probably the ductus arteriosus, the underside of the aorta here, anagrade flow through this outflow tract. Again, not another outflow tract observed in this view. We can see the SVCs draining to the atria here and what appears to be the left pulmonary artery and systole here. We're not sure where that arises from. And this is, again, an axial view, and we've come around to the back of the fetus. So we're now at the back left of the fetus. This is, again, left. This is posterior. This is right. Anterior here, you see the apex pointed to the right. And what we're focusing on here is the presence of pulmonary venous return unobstructed directly to this right-sided atrium. And so, we talked about the presence of total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage in cases of right atrial isomerism, most prominently shown. We typically see that in these cases, but in this case, the pulmonary venous connection is unobstructed to the atrium. With 2D, again, we're looking at the outflow tracts. Here's the dominant outflow tract that it comes off of the left side of the heart and again is the aorta and so it does not bifurcate but if you look closely right next to it here the smaller vessel there's a smaller outflow tract right here where this pointer is this is the pulmonary valve here you can see some movement in there and then you faintly see a bifurcation here okay and so that is the pulmonary artery and so what we see is transposition, specifically left or levo transposition of the great arteries with the aorta to the left of the pulmonary artery. Color Doppler confirms that. Can't really tell whether there's anagrade flow through the pulmonary artery or not. But you can see systolic flow into the left pulmonary artery here and systolic flow into the right pulmonary artery there. Now this is a sagittal view. We've turned uh, the marker at 12 o'clock on maternal abdomen and we can see a long axis of the aortic arch and you can actually see retrograde flow in this tortuous ductus arteriosus here. And so this indicates this is a ductal dependent lesion in terms of the pulmonary outflow being obstructed if not atretic. This next case of right atrial isomerism, fetus is in a cephalic presentation. This is the spine here, so this is posterior. This is left, this side. This is right, anterior. And you can already see that the stomach is on the contralateral side of the heart. The heart is levocardia, left side of the chest, and the stomach is on the right. So the other thing you see pretty clearly at the end of this sweep here is that this is a very complex single ventricle type of unbalanced complete AV septal defect. There's some other features that we'll go over in the next couple of slides. Again, we see a right-sided stomach. Here's the aorta. We're starting to see a circular structure here that is not the IVC because the IVC enters the atrium and is right here. So again, levocardia, we're going to take a closer look at that. 
So color Doppler aorta here, there's that venous structure behind the atrium here. This is not the IVC, this is an additional venous structure. And you can see pulmonary veins as we sweep cephalad from the level of the diaphragm, you see pulmonary veins draining to this structure. Here's flow into the atrium from the hepatic veins, but these are the pulmonary veins and they do not connect to the atrium, the common atrium here, they connect to this venous structure. And so, now as imaging is turned to a sagittal plane, here's the spine back here, so this is anterior, posterior, you're seeing the atrium here. There is the aortic arch. SVC connects to the part of the atrium here. And there's the continuous IVC coming into the floor of that atrium. Again, this is a common atrium and complete AV septal defect or AV canal defect. Single outflow tract here, we're seeing the aortic arch. And importantly, there's the airway. Importantly, you see this little channel behind the atria. Now remember in that axial view, you saw the pulmonary veins draining into a circular venous structure, uh, which is in this case, a vertical vein that brings that flow, that anomalously draining pulmonary veins, the flow goes below the diaphragm. Applying color here, you can see that that venous structure drains just below the diaphragm turns abruptly anteriorly, does not drain to the IVC, it drains to where the ductus venosus comes in. Here is the UV up here, draining to the portal sinus. The portal sinus is here, this is the ductus venosus, and that obstructed, this, was, this will become obstructed, this vertical vein drains directly to where the ductus venosus drains, which then drains to the IVC, and that's how the pulmonary venous blood gets back to the, the common atrium. Closer look at that, we want to interrogate this flow velocity, the gradient through here, uh, just to get an idea of how obstructed it is prenatally, because postnatally when the ductus venosus starts to close, this can become a very critical issue with the pulmonary venous uh, flow into the heart, very severely obstructed. case is very similar to the previous case that I presented. Here we have a vertex or cephalic presenting fetus. Again, this is the spine. This side is left side. This side is right side. And right away, you're seeing a right-sided stomach. And so as we put this in motion, we can see as we sweep up into the chest that there is levocardia, but there's a lot going on here in the abdomen. Here we have the aorta. This is what appears to be the hepatic veins converging into this structure here, which is the IVC draining into the common atrium. Very complex congenital heart defect consisting of a dominant ventricle, so a single ventricle with a common atrium. And then we have this other structure here, which is not supposed to be there, uh, a venous structure anterior to the aorta, but posterior uh, to the IVC, in between the IVC and the aorta, and we'll see what that structure is. But first, we're going to sweep to the top of the chest, and so this is very high in the chest. This is above the great vessels here in the upper chest. We're still seeing the aorta here. We've lost that circle here. But what you should keep in your view is these two circles here. These are bilateral superior vena cavi. And so you'll see that as we go through this study. But interestingly, there is another structure that's shown very well here, and this is the pulmonary artery bifurcation. And so as you see, there's not a main pulmonary artery in this picture, and we'll see why that is coming up. And here at the end of that sweep, behind that common atrium is a pulmonary venous confluence that connects in the center and drains to this venous structure that we showed previously in the previous slide. Put that all in motion from that superior cephalad region of the chest all the way sweeping down. We go through the bilateral superior vena cavi here in the beginning here, pulmonary artery bifurcation, pulmonary venous confluence connecting to that vein 
that goes, in this case, below the diaphragm, and we will show that in subsequent images. So here again, this transverse view showing the stomach and the heart sweeping cephalad, looking at the course of that outflow tract. Here you're seeing at the end of that the aorta, which arises from that single morphological right ventricle, common atrium again, single ventricle. Aorta is to the left of the trachea here at the very end of this sweep. We can see there is the pulmonary artery bifurcation here behind the aorta. And as the aorta arches, we start to see the SVC here, the trachea, and then this is the transverse aortic arch connecting to the descending aorta here. And so this aortic arch is to the left of the trachea. This is the trachea here. Put that back in motion. Nice long sweeps. You get a lot of information if you do these very deliberate, long, slow sweeps. Here focusing in, this is again aortic valve, and we sweep this cephalad, and we can see pulmonary artery bifurcation here. And the ductus arteriosus arises from the underside of the aorta. With color Doppler, you can see anti-grade flow through the aorta here, and coming around, there is a ductus arteriosus which arises from the underside of the aorta here and you see this retrograde flow signal, and that connects to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. Remember there is pulmonary atresia, there's a single outlet, which is the aorta, and so no anti-grade flow from that ventricle gets to the pulmonary arteries, and so it's fed retrograde by this ductus arteriosus. Color Doppler, looking at the pulmonary veins, you can see this continuous flow here. Again, we wanna make sure that the scale is very low to interrogate this, uh, and then looking at the left pulmonary vein venous system and the right pulmonary venous system here connecting to that confluence and then draining with continuous flow. Looking at the right pulmonary vein with spectral Doppler is very, very uh, characteristic of downstream obstruction and also that left side. So they they connect to that confluence together and drain to that venous structure which drains below the diaphragm. And so into a sagittal view here, we have the spine back here, this is anterior, this is the common atrium, and you're seeing the aorta here. This is what looks like the ductus arteriosus, reverse-oriented ductus coming off. But importantly, you see this structure here, this linear venous structure here behind the common atrium running parallel with the aorta about the size the same size as the aorta, so to scale with the aorta. And that, if you remember that axial view through that upper abdomen, we saw the aorta on the spine, we saw another circular venous structure anterior to the aorta, and then we saw the IVC anterior to that. And so the IVC is out of plane here, but you'll see that it's continuous and it connects to that common atrium with this vertical vein passing behind that IVC place some color on, you can see low velocity flow, again, anti-grade flow through the aorta appropriately blue. We have red flow from the IVC coming up into the atrium. And here's that vertical vein with low velocity phasic uh, flow below the diaphragm connecting to the portal system down here. Changed the angle here, again, that same structure here is where the pulmonary veins connect to this vertical venous uh, uh, structure here that goes below the diaphragm. This is the level of the diaphragm. Here's the IVC, again, continuous IVC. This venous structure then courses up, turns here, and will connect to the portal system up here. And so we're seeing this venous structure connect to the portal system. That's the ductus venosus there, and so it connects to the portal system upstream of the ductus venosus. And a little bit closer look at that. Here it is coming into the portal vein. There's the ductus venosus there. And so when we interrogate that, 
we have this relatively high velocity phasic flow which postnatally the ductus venosus will become uh, constricted or close altogether and this will be a very high velocity and obstructed pattern uh, putting the fetus at a severe risk for decompensation. The final case of right atrial isomerism. Again, this fetus is in a cephalic presentation. It's a transverse view through the upper thorax down into the diaphragm. So that means the stomach is on the right side, apex of the heart. The heart is in the left chest, apex pointed to the left. Here's left, anterior here, posterior, and you see levocardia with a right-sided stomach. I'm focusing in closer on the heart here and sharpening the image. We can see a complete AV canal defect here with large ventricular and atrial components. The anterior ventricle is the morphologic right ventricle. Posterior is a left ventricle, and so de-looping of the ventricles. But importantly, here during this sweep, we can see that the pulmonary veins do not drain to the atrium here. They drain to a confluence that's posterior to the left-sided atrium. And when we look at it closer, freeze it and scroll, we can see that these veins join that confluence clearly there without connection to that left-sided atrium. At the end of this sweep, you can see bilateral superior vena cavi there. Here is the ascending aorta. Here are the cavi, right-sided cava and left-sided cava. Here's the descending aorta there. And a little further, we can see the pulmonary artery bifurcation here. And so these arteries are both arising from that morphologic right ventricle smaller pulmonary artery than the aorta, but you can see that the, the, there are bilateral superior vena cavi here. Putting it in motion again and watching it closely, you can see that the pulmonary venous confluence joins a venous structure here and then joins that left-sided SVC. And so we'll Interrogate that with color Doppler next. And so using color Doppler, we can see continuous low velocity flow into the pulmonary veins and they converge here in the center. And then as we interrogate that flow in this particular vein here, which is the left vein, we see almost non-phasic continuous low velocity flow here. Sweeping cephalad, we can see this convergence of these veins and a high velocity flow into that left-sided SVC, which then drains into that left atrium. And so that SVC drains directly into that left atrium and those pulmonary veins here converge to connect with obstruction just based on that color Doppler. Now we can interrogate this with spectral Doppler. And in this case, we're using continuous wave spectral Doppler, very high velocity, again, really non-phasic flow pattern. And when we interrogate and measure a mean gradient through this uh, venous structure, we see that the, the just in the fetus now, this mean gradient of nearly five millimeters of mercury is significant in the fetus and postnatally will likely increase and become even more obstructed. Uh, and this fetus will be in dire straits postnatally without immediate intervention. This is a medical emergency. So to summarize the fetal evaluation of heterotaxy syndrome, you want to make sure that you use these thorough sweeps using transverse or axial views. They are best for diagnosis and sweeping from the abdomen up into the chest to look for these visceroatrial situs discordance features. They are the most prevalent features in heterotaxy syndrome. Remember that left atrial isomerism 
almost every case will have interruption of the IVC and we usually will see some type of rhythm disturbance, most typically complete heart block, which is frequently present. Right atrial isomerism typically has a continuous IVC, usually will have a common atrium, complete AV septal defect, and total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage is, is very common in this particular subtype of heterotaxy syndrome. Make sure you use internal, internal atrial features as well. We talked about the for the cavoatrial junction and the right atrial isomerism cases, you will see a terminal crest at the junction of the SVC to the atrium and in left atrial isomerism, either you'll have a cable entrance to a dilated coronary sinus or a smooth transition from the SVC to the atrium. And remember that cardiac malposition is commonly seen in heterotaxy syndrome. I hope this was helpful. Please leave comments uh, if you would like to see more content or you have any uh, comments to, to share about this presentation, thank you.